Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, thank you for coming uh, this morning. Um, I'm Ahmed Kamel, the Chief of Staff at the Iraqi Mission. Um, and, we, and I'm going to be your moderator for uh, this morning. We gathered today to be briefed by His Excellency, Mr. Uh, Mohammed Marzouk, Chargé of uh, the Iraqi Mission, uh, on the liberation of the city of Mosul. Um, first, uh, um, we will be listening to his opening remarks, and then uh, we will move to your questions. Please, sir. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I thank you for coming today and uh, the opportunity to brief you and indeed through you to the whole world on uh, what has occurred in the city of Mosul and the military campaign to liberate it over the past nine months. Let me begin sharing some perspective and facts to consider. <clears throat> ISIS says the city of Mosul in June 2014 and several days after capturing Mosul, uh, ISIS proclaimed itself a global caliphate and proceeds to refer to itself as the so-called Islamic State. The criminal Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as its leader, so-called Khalifa. Immediately following this, the terrorist groups launch a chain of mass executions atrocities against countless citizens of Mosul under the pretext and lies of being part of Iraqi security forces or even according to their allegations, non-believers in their thoughts like an evil for being Shia Muslim or Yazidis or Christians. ISIS inter, uh, intentionally and brutally destroyed an, around, uh, an untold and priceless number of cultural heritage sites, such as Hadar, Hatra, Namrud, and Prophet Yuna, Nebi Yunus Mosque, and uh, looted a very important archaeological pieces from uh, <clears throat> the Museum of Mosul and any other sites, archaeological sites, places, to take it outside and buy it outside the country. Also, they committed a vast number of sexual abuses and rapes against Shiite Muslims and Yazidis women in Mosul, Talafar, Sinjar, and later those women's fate was to be sold as sex slaves. Due to the control of terrorist groups over the city of Mosul, around 2 million people were forced into displacement, IDPs. The terrorist groups began to force children as young as 12 years old into their fighting force in so-called birds of heaven and those terrified children were forced to participate in ISIS sick and disgusting activities including beheadings of hundreds of civilians putting bombs aside roads and also filming uh, such military activities for propaganda. The main goal of ISIS was to turn the city of Mosul into a massive metropolitan training center where after said training they deployed terrorists into different countries worldwide to operate it as so-called sleeper cells. Therefore, they named Mosul as land of empowerment. 
Uh, additionally, the very fact that they held one of Iraq and region's most ancient and important city was one of their most powerful global recruitment tools. Nine months ago, Prime Minister of Iraq, Dr. Haider al-Abadi, and Commander-in-Chief launched the operation of retake the city of Mosul, dubbed We Are Coming Nainawa. Qadimun Yan Nainawa in Arabic. The operation's central goal for Iraqi security forces was to eliminate all terrorist groups inside the city of Mosul and not allow any of them to escape from the city as they represent a continuous and future threat should they survive. All Iraqi security forces participated in Mosul city liberation, including the Iraqi army, counter-terrorism service, federal police, popular mobilization forces, Kurdish Peshmerga, and tribal fighters. And all these forces were deployed in different locations and with different tasks according to a joint military plan. All of them carried out their duties in accordance with direct instructions of the Commander-in-Chief, the Prime Minister, Dr. Haider al-Abadi. And they sustained loses of, uh, sorry, and they sustained loses at a level that only a serious and dedicated military could suffer. The main priority of it is to protect the civilians in the city. Iraq and its government highly appreciate their allies in the US-led international coalition, which had a tremendous role in the fight against ISIS by providing an absolute necessary air cover and in collaboration with the Iraqi Air Force to the Iraqi troops on the ground as well as supporting Iraqi ground security forces through a number of critical military advisors, especially at al gayara base in the city of Mosul. The Iraqi security forces successfully liberated and secured the east side of the city by 24th of January 2017 and continued their offensive to recapture Western Mosul. The troop advanced, was slowed by elaborate defenses and disgustingly by the presence of some civilians, as I said, who were used as the human shields. Towards the conclusion of the liberation and as a sign of desperation, ISIS increased its use of suicide bombers to slow down the advance of Iraqi forces, but they were unsuccessful. Finally, on July 10th, 2017, Prime Minister of Iraq, Dr. Haider Labadi, announced the full liberation of the city of Mosul and the defeat of ISIS. He said, and I quote, from the heart of the city of Mosul, with the unity, solidarity, blood, and sacrifice of the Iraqi people, we defeated the flashwood, the falsehood state, and we were able to prevail thanks to all Iraqi security forces for their bravery, discipline, and sacrifice. God bless and raise the souls of martyrs. Your sacrifice won't be forgotten. End of quote. Indeed, operational abilities and the ultimate sacrifice of the Iraqi security forces successfully liberated one of the Iraq's largest, most important, plural, uh, pluralistic and diverse cities and we thank God for what they have accomplished. 
Now we are moving to the maps. I will show you the process of the relation, the eastern and western side of Mosul. Let me show you. This is the map of the Iraq, and you, sh uh, you saw Mosul, Mosul in the north of Iraq. It's uh, near our closer of the border, of the northern border of Iraq to Turkey and Syria. It's a big city. It's number two in Iraq, where population is around three million people. It's a very big city. We will show the... This is the city of Mosul. The Tigris River divided the city into two parts, the eastern and the western. This is the eastern side, and this is the western side. The western side is the old one. We are in the old building and old uh, narrow roads. The fight here is very complicated. And this, uh, this part is very uh, crowded of people, of civilians, because this, the old city is there. This map, on December 19, 2016, you show and you see the, the green uh, color here. The operation of liberation of Mosul. Do you hear me, please? Do you hear me well? The liberation begin in the east side. Uh, sorry, in the west side. From here, beginning the operation of liberation. You saw the the green at December two thousand and sixteen. The green one is liberated, and the red one. This is the area of conflict between Iraqi forces and terrorist groups. And the, the other one is under the control of ISIS. This map, according to December 19, 2016. In 24th of January 2017, you see now the whole Western side of Mosul are liberated. Still a small area here, according to 22nd of January and 24th, the whole Western side are liberated. <clears throat> this is the last map of the liberation, as you, as you see. The whole city of Mosul are liberated. The last liberation activities were in the eastern, uh, in the western side, the old city. is, As I mentioned, is the old one. Very complicated area. Old building, narrow roads, where, uh, where there are a lot of people, a lot of civilians there. This map is according to July 3rd, 2017. I thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you, sir, for your briefing. Uh, we're going to move now to your questions, um, um, and I'm seeking your uh, assistance here of focusing only on Mosul because that's the main subject of, uh, of this briefing. Thank you so much, and uh, please, if anyone has any questions. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. On behalf of the UN Correspondent Association, uh, thank you for this briefing. My name is Nabil Abi Saab, and I am Al Hurra TV station correspondent. Um, yesterday, the Security Council uh, issued a statement that, uh, uh, of course, welcomed the liberation of Mosul, but also called uh, on uh, Iraqi authorities to focus now on uh, national uh, reconciliation and uh, the return of uh, people uh, to Mosul and to their uh, homes. Um, 
how do you receive uh, uh, such calls and what are the early steps that the, you, you will take in this regard? Let me uh, answer one by one or okay. connect? Yeah. No, one. Thank you, Nabil. Uh, we are well known, uh, you and your effort uh, in the, in the uh, United Nations. Yes, the statement of the Security Council is well uh, welcomed by the Iraqi government. Of course, the priority of the government of Iraq is the reconciliation, reconstruction, and how we can deal with the IDPs. So this is our priority. This is the priority of the government of Iraq. And we are uh, urge the international uh, society to help Iraq, to support Iraq in these fields. Of course, our priority is how to reconstruct not only the Mosul, but all the liberated cities like Fallujah, Ramadi, uh, Beji, and Salahuddin, all these cities need to reconstru uh, reconstruction and also to return back the IDPs to their homes and to begin life again. Yes, sir. Uh, Joseph Klein of Canada Free Press. Uh, could you tell us, first of all, are there still any residual uh, ISIS uh, terrorists particularly within the old city, uh, that are still considered a significant threat. And secondly, how does Iraq intend to um, maintain the security of what it has liberated in, in Mosul? Um, and particularly, to what extent is Iraq relying on Iranian-supported uh, militia or Iranian forces themselves as part of that uh, security arrangement. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Of course, it's uh, one of the main challenges for the Iraq on how to keep the peace in the whole country. As you know, the, the, the Syrian crisis affected the, what will happen in Iraq. Now we try to uh, eliminate all this area around uh, Mosul from the terrorists. We, uh, as the government of Iraq, will begin to launch also an opera, a military operation to, to, to clean all the borders or the, 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 uh, the regions uh, in the western of Iraq uh, and to, to, uh, to flow down all of them outside of the Iraq. Uh, we appreciate all efforts uh, submitted by all the friends to uh, to help Iraq as advisors from uh, from uh, international coalition from other sides, and we we try of course to to begin peace for Iraqi because the Iraqis suffer a lot from wars and military uh, activities. But to, yes. to what, I just want to follow up. Um, to what extent uh, did the Iraqi security forces rely on Iranian-supported uh, militia or, again, Iranian uh, forces themselves in the liberation? And to what extent does Iraq intend to rely on such Iranian support uh, to secure the peace in Mosul? As our prime minister said, the, the fight in, in, in Mosul was done by Iraqi 100%. 100% of those fighters in Mosul are Iraqis from different groups, from Peshmerga, from Iraqi forces, from uh, army forces, from police forces. And we have not any foreigner who, who fight, uh, uh, any foreigner who fight in Mosul, only the Iraqis who fight uh, in Mosul. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you. Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, a question on um, justice. What, what is Iraq doing now to seek prosecution of Islamic State militants for some of the crimes committed? And uh, Britain was working on a draft resolution to set up a UN investigation, but a letter was needed from the Iraqi government. Does Iraq um, plan to seek a UN investigation to help with this? Thanks. Yes, uh, Iraq are considering uh, a draft resolution with our colleagues from British sides and we uh, concerning the accountability. 
And of course, we need such, uh, such arrangement for the Iraqi side to uh, ameliorate the uh, jurisdiction Iraqi, uh, local jurisdiction Iraqi system to consider these crimes, these atrocity according to Iraqi law. And we are, we are uh, uh, discussing with our colleagues from British side about this issue. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador, for this briefing. This is Majid Gili from the Iraqi Kurdish Rudal Media Network. Uh, we hope to see more of briefings like this from Iraqi mission. I want to ask uh, uh, after questions. The first one is Amnesty International recently issued a report that uh, basically accuses Iraqi forces and uh, the coalition of uh, killing thousands of civilians and potential war crimes. Um, I want your comments about those reports. How credible are they and how they gather the information? And uh, the, my second question is about Security Council statement yesterday. Uh, in this statement, um, I mean, when we hear from you and from the Prime Minister, you mention all the forces that are, have fought ISIS and helped the Iraqi army to liberate Mosul, Peshmerga and Hajj al-Shaabi. But in this statement, there is not even indirect mention of Hajj al-Shaabi and Peshmerga. Uh, was that statement coordinated with the Iraqi mission? And are you happy about that? Thank you very much. Uh, concerning the amnesty uh, reports, uh, our prime minister said that we need to be uh, more information and verified information about what will uh, what will write down in their reports. We uh, we respect Amnesty International because it's very big uh, NGOs dealing with the human rights issue, but we need to be verified. All the, the information that uh, shut down in the, in the, uh, in the reports of uh, Amnesty International must be verified, and we are uh, open to amnesty to to receive from them if you if they have any uh, verified information and we can collect with them cooperate with them to make an investigation about all these information uh, declared by the amnesty concerning the, the the statement of security council we are not member in the, in the security council but uh, they they mention in in general that they welcome the liberation of Mosul and they stress on the uh, the efforts made by all the Iraqi forces and I mentioned our prime minister mentioned Iraqi forces uh, include all these groups who are really fighting in in, in, in Mosul including Peshmerga including the uh, mobilization uh, forces. Uh, if it's uh, mentioned in the in the, in the same or not, this is not the, the this is not an, a, a big issue because we are Iraqi. Know what's the role of Peshmerga? What's the role of uh, Iraqi mobilization forces uh, in the liberation of all Iraqi territories from the terrorists? Thank you. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for the briefing and, and the map. One follow-up on the human rights one, because it's, it's not just amnesty. I'm sure you've seen or, may, or heard of the, the videos that have come out that seem to show, you know, ISIS fighters but already disarmed, something thrown off a building, different things. And so I'm wondering, and I, th I think the Interior Ministry has said that some soldiers have been suspended. Can you just say a bit more what the reaction to these videos and what the process will be to find out who it was doing these things. And the second one has to do with reconstruction. I, I saw an article that, that, that uh, some oil fields will be opened up for, for bidding. What, what's the process of gathering the resources to rebuild these obviously kind of destroyed areas? And is there, what's the UN's role in that? Do you expect UN financial help or logistical help? Just say a little bit about reconstruction. Thanks. Thank you for your question. Of course, it's, it's a challenge for Iraq to, to, to deal with this issue. But uh, it's our priority to, re to re reconstruct our country. And concerning the, the, the bridges of human rights, as you, uh, this is the war. In the war, you have uh, loses something, and you have a priorities. Our priorities in this war is to protect civilians as much as we can. But as you know, uh, it's the war. Sometimes they, they, they make casualties, they make uh, martyrs, but this is the war. And uh, of course, we appreciate all efforts that mentioned that the Iraqi uh, forces deal with this issue by a highly, uh, a highly uh, degree of protecting of civilians. And thank you so much. 
Thank you for your understanding. I have a meeting. Uh, Thank now, you so much so for. I would like to go.